Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the 2300 millimeter Fox V2 by FMS. Before we get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by FMS who sent me this 2300 millimeter Fox V2 for review. I'll have affiliate links in the description if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. Remember affiliate links, if you use those, the channel gets a little bit of a kickback, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. I'd like to say thanks to FMS for including me in the review process. Let's get started. We'll cover some key specifications before we get into the box. The wingspan is 2300 millimeters or 91 inches for those of you living in the US. Overall length is 1290 millimeters or 50.8 inches. The flying weight is 1150 grams and it uses a surprising 4018-1900 kV motor. That seems kind of big. It seems like kind of a big motor. The wing area is 37.5 dm squared. It uses a 30 amp ESC and six 9 gram servos. The battery also surprised me a little bit. It's only a 3 cell 1300 25C. Now obviously this follows the glider format with a very large wingspan. Yes, I know it's a powered glider, which some people will call a plane or a motor glider. But in any event, because it follows that light wing loading format. It doesn't need much of a battery because the intention is that you're really not flying it around with a battery. You're looking to soar with it. That's the idea. Okay, with the key specifications wrapped up, let's open the box and see what's inside. As usual with first looks, I do like to stop and give you a look at how the model is packed inside the box so you have an understanding of the lengths the manufacturer goes to to protect the model during shipping. So in typical FMS fashion, they've done a very nice job securing the model inside the box. And as you can see, there's a lot of styrofoam separating the parts from each other to help avoid damage. And nothing inside this box really moves around. All these major pieces are secured very well inside the box. So good job on FMS for making sure they've done their part at least to help ensure that your product arrives undamaged. All right, first up is the manual. This is a typical FMS black and white paper affair. It's written in English and Chinese. So if you need a language other than English and Chinese, just be aware of that one. This one comes with English and Chinese. And the manual itself is very normal for FMS. They've got nice little exploded diagrams showing you how everything goes together. There's not a whole lot of detail in this one. We're already, you know, in page eight, we're already up to the radio setup. And that's because on these types of planes, there's just not a whole lot of work to do. So they do specify the important bits about your rates and your center of gravity and how your arms get connected to the various surfaces and where your wires get connected. But overall, very simple assembly on these types of planes. Now we'll take a look at the wings and here's a look at the leading edge of the port wing. I like to give you guys a look at that so you can see just how straight they are. And I've said for a long time, FMS has done a really good job in their EPO molding process. So I never really see any design flaws in the mold itself. It always looks very good to me and this one's no exception. One thing I've often wondered about when it comes to EPO models is if there would be any way for them to trim down the trailing edge. So that's about three or four millimeters right there. It'd be nice if that could come down to a fine point. So anyway, there's the aileron trailing edge. Here is the flap trailing edge. I don't see any issues with warp or bending there. They do use EPO hinges on these. Don't forget you need to flex these before you attach your servo because I can tell you right now that's kind of rigid. You don't want to put that load on your servo and you also don't want to torque your aileron and get bend or twist in your aileron. So make sure you flex it. Really important on a much longer surface like this one to do that. And then on the flap side, uh, same deal. You want to flex that as well. You can see the servos are already installed. They use nine gram digitals. I see these FMS servos in all kinds of different airplanes. They're generally very good. I've had, a, I've had one or two on infant mortality, but outside of that, once they, once they work, they work. And then in terms of marking, you've got G-C Fox and the FMS model website on the flap there. Here's a look at the starboard wing. Again, no issues. It looks perfectly straight to me. I mean, just very, very straight, very nicely done. I don't see any issues on the top surface, no damage no indentations, no scratches, no marks. So that's a testament to the packing that they do at the factory at FMS. And then on the bottom side, both servos again are installed. The cool thing about flaps and ailerons is you can do the full crow braking routine if you want in your setup. So very cool to do that. And uh, ailerons, they do have a reinforcement strip. One thing I notice about this reinforcement strip, and it's a comment that I would make to all these manufacturers, these strips, this is a, it's about a two to three millimeter strip uh, by one millimeter and it's laid down flat. Now the problem with that is when it's laid down flat like that, it can still torque. 
It's a much more rigid reinforcement if you turn those 90 degrees and insert them up and down so that the one millimeter part is the top facing bit. That makes that much more rigid. So while I move the aileron, I do see some flex out there, but you, remember, you gotta loosen these up first. You gotta work them first, but I'm just not sure on how long this particular surface is if that reinforcement is gonna be highly effective. It looks like it has the ability to bend without much effort at all. So just be aware of that. That's a modification you might want to work on is reinforcing the aileron uh, all the way out to the tip. Next up is the horizontal stabilizer and elevator and same deal. You know, you've got this EPO hinge in there. One thing I like to recommend on these EPO hinges after you've flown the plane a couple of times, you don't have to do it day one, you know, just get out and fly the plane and enjoy it for a little while. But as part of your regular maintenance, eventually cut the EPO hinge clean off. Make sure you have a clean edge on the stabilizer and on the control surface and then hinge them with CA style hinges or pin hinges if you can fit them in. I always do that on EPO planes that I keep over the long term, especially on a control surface as in critical as the elevator. One thing I do like about the control surface is notice the horn goes over the reinforcement strip. That's good because that helps ensure that horn doesn't settle into your EPO. So I do like that. And then you can see right here on the stabilizer itself, there's another reinforcement strip to keep it from flexing as well. Although same deal, that one looks like a rod. I think they would have been much better served if they would have taken a three by one and put it in vertically. That would have made this much more rigid in my opinion. On the top of the horizontal stabilizer, there's a plastic bit with a couple of brass inserts to secure it to the fuselage. And I do like that because that'll ensure it stays secure over time. Next up is the guest of honor, and that's the fuselage itself. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the canopy first and give you a look inside. The first time I opened it, I thought I was doing something wrong, but you gotta get your fingers underneath the back there and pop it. So once you get that little pop, you can finish pulling it out, and then you can remove the canopy. There are these two little plastic knobs that go down into the fuselage, and they latch the center section of the canopy securely down to the fuselage. So I do like the design. And then there's another one of the clips on the back itself. There is a civilian sport pilot inside, which is kind of nice. Nice little detail. He's got his parachute on and his hat and sunglasses. So nice little detail if you're into scale details like that. And I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick this up or not, but there are some markings on the dashboard in there. So the dashboard has got some detail as well. But it looks like the lights might be blocking the view inside the cockpit there. And then on the front of the cockpit, you've got the little tongue that inserts into the fuselage. And I always like that approach because that ensures the front edge of the cockpit stays locked down in the model when you're flying. Here's a look inside the fuselage and all kinds of space in there. If you wanted to FPV this one, you've got space for days in there. You've got a small battery, remember only 1300 milliamp hours, and you could probably fit much bigger than that in there as well. So that looks like the actual battery strap. So you can put all your electronics up here if you want. Uh, there's the little tiny 30 amp ESC and here are all the wires required for connections to your control surfaces in the back. So very simple layout inside and a lot of room if you want to add some extra equipment in there. I don't see any problem doing that at all. And in the back section underneath the canopy, you have access to the elevator servo, which is right here. So if you need to make a change out, very easy to do that. There's just a control rod here with a quick connector. And then the wiring just goes under this little section right here. So if you do have to maintain your elevator servo or change it for whatever reason, very simple to do that. That's actually quite handy. And then on the back, there is the rudder servo. Fairly easy access to that for maintenance purposes if you need to do anything with the rudder as well. So no problems there. And then just like the other control surfaces, the hinges are EPO. But unfortunately, there is no reinforcement underneath this control horn. So that's something you might want to think about. Get yourself a little one by three strip, cut a slot, and put your control horn in on top of that reinforcement strip. Just throwing it out there in case you concern yourself with such things. On the bottom, you can see we've got a single main wheel on the front and a tail wheel on the back. So when you land, you won't scuff up your plane. And then finally on the belly of the aircraft, they do have ventilation. So here's a ventilation intake up here, which is good. And then a ventilation egress in the back, which is okay. But they really need to work on this because your ventilation in the back needs to be about two times the size of the ventilation up front. And that's the proper airflow. It really needs to be expanded. So that's another area you might want to think about. However, that said, it is only a 30 amp ESC and this is a glider. So it's probably not that big of a deal. But if you live in a very hot climate like I do in Florida, that might be something worth considering. And that's opening up your ventilation in the back just a little bit. And then up front, we've got this propeller and spinner already mounted and they actually did reverse the screws. So on this side, you've got the head here and on this side, you've got the nut here. So they reverse the screws in order to help keep things balanced. That way you have the nut on the top and bottom on opposing sides. 
I'd say overall the assembly on the Fox fuselage looks really good. I don't see any assembly problems in terms of glue overages. It looks very clean. No damage to the fuselage anywhere that I can see. And of course the decals are already applied. So I think they've done a really nice job putting this fuselage together. It looks just fine. And of course they include a wing spar tube, which is nothing to write home about there. And then in the hardware bag, we've got some Y cables for flaps and ailerons. We've got some ball link connecting rods for the servo to control horn. And then on the backside, we've got the control horns that need to be installed. I'll get this plane built and put together just as soon as I can. It's not gonna take much, very short assembly process. I'll probably spend more time working on the radio configuration than anything else. And of course, a lot of people usually ask me for my radio configurations when I do gliders for some reason. So I'll be happy to post my configuration after the maiden in my Discord. So if you're interested in my configuration on how I set up Crow and Sport Mode and all the other things that I'll do on the radio for these types of planes, get on my Discord and you'll be able to download the file. Please do not ask me to post it anywhere else. I won't. It will be on my Discord. Thanks to FMS for sending this 2300 millimeter Fox out for review. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something. I'd like to say thanks to FMS for sending this unit out. Before we get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored. <clears throat> thanks to FMS for sending this unit out. We're going to open it. Wait, what are you trying to say? Before we get started, I need to let you know this video is. As usual with first looks, I do like to stop so you can get. As usual with first looks, I do like to stop and give you a look at how the aircraft. As usual with first looks, I do like to stop and. As usual with first looks, I do like to stop and let you see how the airplane is packed. As usual with first looks, I do like to stop and let you see how the model is packed in the packing so you get an idea of what. And then right here on the back, you can see that you get. And then on the back. And then in the back section of the canopy. Now I know a lot of people will ask, okay.